Assalamualaikum uh, Welcome uh, Thank you all For come here uh, Saya akan jawab soalan anda I will answer your question Apa dia? Uh, komen mengenai timbalan menteri yang nikah online With the imam in a masjid Kedai baru di Golok First of all <laughs> Fitnah Fake news Mana ada masjid yang call itself Masjid Kedai Baru ha. Is it a kedai or a masjid? How would you feel if I buka a kedai And call it Masjid Baru? Ha. Confused tak you all? Ha. You nak datang sembahyang ke? Nak beli buku? Confused, confused ha. Tapi seperti yang dijelaskan oleh The Timbalan Menteri Ini perkara peribadi This is a private matter ha. Why you all sibuk-sibuk provok-provok ni? Ha. The Timbalan Menteri told Sina Harian And I quote Isu seperti ini sepatutnya tidak berlaku Hmm? What does he mean that the nikah patutnya tidak berlaku? No, no, no. The video patutnya tidak berlaku. Who would be so stupid to break the law and then video and then upload the video online? It shouldn't have happened. Ah, huh? Takkan uh, you nak makan durian-durian PKPP ataupun you nak visit your friend for lunch and then upload the video online. It shouldn't have happened. You will not do it. Ah, huh? What's that? The timbalan yang dipetua Majlis Agama Islam Wilayah Naratiwat Abdul Aziz Cik Mat menjelaskan pihaknya tidak pernah mengiktiraf pernikahan secara dalam talian. <laughs> This is where he is wrong. Ini bukan secara talian. Nobody is calling-calling. Halo-halo. Tak ada. This was online. Atas talian. On the line. Ha, macam Tinder. Eh, macam grinder. Hmm? What is grinder? I don't know. Anyway, they didn't call in, call in. Uh, This one is video calling. Ini norma baru. Uh, but, but once again, I repeat, it shouldn't have happened. But why nikah right now during this time when the entire country is struggling, orang yang tak ada makan, tak ada nasi, and why nikah in the first place? Hmm. Ini you kena salahkan Spanish fly. Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you all for come here. Uh, I will answer all your questions. Apa dia? Kat depan tu? My comment, when it was reported in the morning, the Timbalan Menteri Ahmad Amzad said, kerajaan tak dapat memenuhi permintaan orang ramai merakam gambar atau video ketika disuntik. I cannot, cannot. You cannot take the video. Because this will mengganggu the kelancaran of the vaccination process. You tengah dapat the vaccine, then you take out your camera and then the nurse or the doctor see the the camera want to, eh, want to answer nayo, answer nayo. Ah, cannot. You will mengganggu. It cannot. Tak boleh. Tak boleh. Cannot. Hmm? Bagaimana in the afternoon pula, petang, YB Khairi Jamaluddin said you can take the video in the vaccination process. Can. Apa salahnya? Boleh. Bagus. Memang bagus. Apa boleh? Because you, you nak ingatkan. You want to remember. You want to posting-posting IG story. Ah, this one is my posterity. I remember. Ah, boleh. Apa salahnya? Hmm? Kenapa confuse? Apa yang confuse? Confuse. Kenapa timbalan menteri pagi cakap sesuatu... Menteri Petang cakap lain This is not confusing The reason the timbalan Menteri said one thing in the morning And the Menteri said another thing in the afternoon If you don't want to take a video Selfie-selfie, you go Vaccine in the morning If you want to take the video selfie-selfie You vaccine in the afternoon Apa yang confused? Tak, tak, boleh Senang je, senang Hi everyone, uh, welcome to What's Going On in Malaysia. I will be going live at exactly 10 p.m. Uh, but first I'm going to say goodnight to my kids. Uh, this is Andrea, uh, Xander, and Zidane over here. I'm going to say goodnight to them. You guys are going to go to sleep? Yeah. Okay, you're going to go to sleep. So say goodnight to Malaysia and everybody. Oh, we've lost, we've lost the camera there. Never mind. Uh, say goodnight to Malaysia. Goodnight. Good night, good night, Malaysia. Malaysia. Good night, Malaysia. Okay, good night. Say good night. Good night. Oh, okay, bye. All right, guys. Off you go. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll be back live at 10 p.m., all right? 10 p.m. We're going to get back. We'll watch one more clip, and then we'll be back.
Hi, Arif Iskander with a 60 second response. Hamelin uh, TV uh, from IG asked, Mr. Arif Iskander, why you can't run for Prime Minister? First of all, thank you for the kind message. And secondly, to become Prime Minister in Malaysia, you need to first be the leader of a political party or a coalition. And then your party or coalition needs to win the actual election, at which point the PM is chosen by the members of the parliament, usually made up of members of the winning party. Which begs the question, what if we, the Rakyat, could actually choose the Prime Minister or any other minister? for that matter. So for example, what if we, the Raya, could vote for person A to be the Prime Minister, uh, and he's from this party, and, but we like person B to be the Minister of Education, and he's from a different party, and then we like person C to be the Home Minister, and he's a complete independent, which means instead of ministers being chosen from the pool of people who are members of the one winning party, we get to elect the person that we think could actually be best for the job. So <laughs> what about that? Arith Iskander, 60 second response. Hey, it's Harith Iskander, 60 second response. I got a direct message on Facebook from a Joe Harith who asked, Harith, you anti Melayu ke? Nak dapat sokong non-bumi sebab family you semua tak ada Malays. Lucky your late father, Melayu bracket soldier. Kalau dia ada, sedih tengok you sekarang. Okay, I tried to reply to Joe Harith directly on Facebook, but I think he blocked me. I could not do that, so I'm putting it out there. My late father, Colonel Musa bin Muhammad, uh, waktu dia di hutan during the communist insurgency in the 60s and 70s, alongside all the other soldiers daripada berbagai bangsa of the 6 regiment rangers tak pernah fikir kita sedang bertugas untuk mempertahankan bumi ataupun non-bumi diorang semua fikir kita bertugas untuk mempertahankan rakyat Malaysia so I don't think my late father would be sedih to see what I'm doing now tapi mungkin dia sedih kalau dia tahu ada juga orang Malaysia zaman ini yang ada mentality yang kata kita hanya boleh sokong bumi atau hanya boleh sokong non-bumi I'm Harith Iskandar 60 second response saya sokong Malaysia Apa khabar? Ha, Assalamualaikum uh, I am here to address the issue of the test drive ha, Saya tahu ramai nak tanya pasal itu Okay macam ni As was explained by my political secretary We were on our way to Kuala Lumpur ha, On the way kita lapar, hungry So we stopped at the food shop And then betul-betul sebelah the food shop Ada kedai kereta showroom Itu je as my political secretary said that's all that happened. Apa dah? Ada video dan gambar yang tunjuk saya masuk the showroom kapak ke? Huh? Okay, 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 okay. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is, that is, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's say I masuk the car showroom. It's only because tengah makan, I look across the road, I saw benda yang cantik. Kereta yang cantik. Kereta tu. So, you know lah, kita nampak benda cantik. Kita tertarik, ah, kita tertarik sana. Bukanlah macam saya. Ah, tertarik dengan janda ke, dengan minah rewang ke, belen ke. Ah, tapi kalau ada janda dalam kereta yang cantik tu, lagi bagus kan. <laughs> joke, ah, it's a joke, 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 it's a joke, it's a joke. So, saya pergi sebelah nak tengok aja yang kereta yang cantik tu. Tiba-tiba ada salesman datang. He greet me. Apa dah? What is the salesman doing in the shop? During MCO, padahal car salesman is not essential. Tak. Han tanya lah dia. Dan tanya saya pula. Saya hanya, kerja saya hanya to greet him. Apa salah kita greet people? During MCO tak boleh greet people ke? SOP kata ke, tak boleh greet people ke? Ada ke? Ada, 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 ada. Tak ada, tak ada, tak ada. So, that is all that happened. I just cross the road to greet him. That is all that happened. Nothing happened. Apa dah? Ada gambar dan video yang nampak saya masuk dalam kereta tu ke? Okay, okay. <laughs> ladies, 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 ladies. <laughs> Let's see. I masuk the kereta. <laughs> I duduk dalam the passenger seat. Ah, The salesman duduk in the driver seat. Dia yang driver. My bodyguard duduk kat belakang. Ah, So, I was not test driving the car. I was test passenger the car. Ah. Ada tak SOP mengenai test passenger? Tak ada kan? Tak ada, tak ada, tak ada, tak ada. Don't have, don't have, don't have, don't have. Ah, itulah dia. So, apa dah? What about the SOP that says you cannot have more than two people in a car? Ha, ah, siapa? Ha, ah, siapa? Where, where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? Ha? Ah? Nilai? Ha? Ah. No wonder lah. I will not be judged by you. Ah? I will not be
Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of What's Going On Malaysia. My kids are still here. Tapa, they're probably going to go in and out of frame as uh, the first 10 minutes of the show go on. But the show must go on. First of all, thank you very much for uh, watching. Thank you very much for catching this streaming. As usual, this is an interactive show. Uh, I need to know that you guys can see me. I need to know that you guys can hear me. I will be keeping an eye on the comments uh, at the section. Let me know if you can see me. Let me know if you can hear me. And those are my kids, Baru Claude. Did you just see them go out the door? I think he did. <laughs> And let me know where you're from. Where are you watching from? I know we have uh, bukan saja orang yang uh, ting ting orang um, streaming ini daripada Malaysia, but we got, always got people from Australia, from New Zealand, from Saudi Arabia, from from Dubai, from Hong Kong, from Taiwan. Let me know where you're watching, and let me know where you are watching from. And don't forget to share this Facebook post if you're watching on Facebook. Just share it on your own Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget, don't forget, ah, uh, forget tu lah satu perkataan yang kita uh, baru. Termasuk dalam kamus bahasa. Don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Guys, uh, okay, so I just want to show you. Dave Anand is watching from the Philippines. Mabu Hai. Uh, Halmon Franklin is watching from Klang. What's up, homie? CJ1 is watching from Sydney. Gadai Might. Uh, tengok tu. Kita boleh buat semua accent. Accent? Accent. That's right. Accent. Accent. Accent kind of action. Thank you for watching. Watching from Rawang. Suzanne Tan is watching from Seremban. We've got people from all over Malaysia, all over the world. Uh, from San, San, bukan San Jose, San Jose. Jose. San Jose. My wife just said, San Jose. San Jose. San Jose tu ialah bila kita... Jose, Jose, Jose. Sri Kembangan Selangor. Okay. San Jose is when you want Jose to go and pick up your food. Ah, You San Jose dulu. That's the way it works. Did my wife just say pantat you off camera? Did you guys hear that? Can hear. <laughs> dia ingat, dia ingat ni teknologi kau dengar saya, saya je. All right, guys. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure you all saw the poster. Uh, you know who my guest is. And we were initially going to be talking about a subject which uh, emerged yesterday. We were initially going to be talking about the... Um, the speech by the Prime Minister, uh, where he offered an olive branch to the opposition uh, to, to, to join with Prikata National in return for some political reforms. Now, that was the initial intention of inviting um, the guest that I'm about to bring into the show, because uh, he is from the current opposition, and he posted up a Facebook post, which, which let's just say, you can hantam lah. Let's just say, you can hantam. From left, right, center, middle, up, down, and uh, everywhere, everywhere. Kenantam. But things have changed. That's that is Malaysia for you. Nothing is permanent. We just kita sekejap kiri sekejap kind of things have changed because you know I, I don't know whether you are all all aware of this, but huge news within the last uh, four or five hours. First it was unverified, then it was verified. Uh, but you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna not gonna hold you in suspense any longer. If you don't know what the news is, I'm gonna be bringing in my guest for the moment. Now uh, this gentleman was very kind when he responded to my messages, and he said, "Yes, uh, I can come on the show uh, and I can get into a whole lot of trouble." But that is what politicians do, right? They just speak their mind, they say what they stand for, and they get in trouble. Hopefully, I will not be getting him to, into too much trouble, because if he gets in trouble, I get in trouble. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, dalam bahasa Malaysia, dengan tidak lebih ado, kita akan menjemput ke a streaming ini. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tony Hua. How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for Very having good. me on the show. Uh, I, I did ask... Some... Thank you for joining me on the show. I did ask you via WhatsApp, should I, uh, is it YB Pua? Is it Atu, Datu Sri, Tan Sri? I, I don't know. And you said um, uh, to dispense with the, uh, the, the, the what, what did you call it? For my Honorific. Honoraries. Yes. Oh, so, honorific. Like, how, how, honorifics. How, so how would I refer to you during this program? You can call me Tony. You can call me anything you want. Tony. Okay. You can call me. Don't don't tell me I can call you anything I want. After that. Well, people gave me a lot of names today. Yeah. I'm sure they did. I have been, I have been receiving comments before the show began, and I was like, "Why so much hate?" 
People yeah, are so calling you, you left, right, and animal, center. Animal name from A to Z. You can what call happened? me that. Name. What happened to me? Okay, just to put into perspective, uh, shorter Reader's Digest version, uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin offered an olive branch in his speech yesterday. You posted up a Facebook comment which has resulted in a lot of controversy. Before we jump to the topic at hand, what generally, what was your response on Facebook that created all this negativity? What did you respond? I, 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 think, I think very simply, uh, everyone, including myself, wants the current Prime Minister to go. Because we think he did a horrible job and because he betrayed the Rakyat's trust back in 20, well, back in 2020, uh, betrayed the Rakyat's mandate in 2018 when we voted the Harapan government uh, into power. So we want him to go. But when he offered the olive branch, basically I saw an opportunity, a very rare opportunity where we can take advantage of a weak government to deliver much needed reforms and benefits for the people of the country. So I, 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 I tried to look beyond wanting him to go, uh, look beyond the sentiment of wanting to kill traitors, pengkhianats, and actually see, can we achieve something that the people will benefit at least over the next six months before we have a showdown in the general elections? So that, let, me, let, let me get this straight. What you saw was an opportunity to uh, um, get on the side of someone that you all have already admitted you are not on the side, but for what would be called an interim period. Uh, until yes. the, the next general election. So my question would be, why would you want to get on that side instead of waiting that six or eight months or what, however long it would take before we get to the general election? Well, okay, let, 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 let's be a little bit more specific. Uh, okay. I, I, for, for one, I am not, we are not intending to join the government. So there was no intention of doing that. But what the Perikatan National Government or the Prime Minister Muhyiddin offered was several key reforms. I'll, I'll, I'll list them down quickly. Number one, two-term Prime Ministers. So no Prime Minister can stay longer than two terms. Number two, uh, anti-hopping law. No more frogs. Wow. No more frogs. <laughs> uh, okay, be, be, before, before you go on, has it, just for my personal knowledge, because I can't say that I, I know for a fact, has this um, idea popped up before in Parliament? Hey, why don't we stop this anti-frogging uh, law? Has it popped up before? And if so, what stopped it from going through? Well, uh, specifically on the anti-hopping law, uh, there's this ironic bias. Whoever who is in government have very little incentive to pass an anti-hopping law. Okay. Because the opposition will always jump to you. You want okay. that, right? As a government, you have incentive to have opposition jumping to you. It is very, very rare you see a government member jumping to the opposition. So whoever who becomes a government, yeah, the opposition jadi kerajaan, okay? Bila jadi kerajaan, it's okay lah, we can delay the anti-hopping law scheme. Because it is to our advantage. So, so in this case, yeah. carry on. In this case, you have a weak government in place who offers the anti-hopping law, and we can actually grab the opportunity and pass it once and for all. I thought this all. It was a golden opportunity, if of course the offer is real, and that's why we need to pinjam. We need to go and talk to the other side. Okay, fair, fair enough. Uh, but of course, you will know that the natural reaction of the majority of your supporters, uh, as well as uh, uh, Pakatan with supporters, will be like, how, how can you trust them? Because that is so, the job of the opposition. <laughs> so I, 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 think, I think that the biggest question that was raised, and I, I read many of the thousands, uh, my Facebook post, I think, <laughs> and I saw it this afternoon, had like three or 4,000 comments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> read all of them. But the gist of it, for those 
who were against or who didn't like my post was the issue of trust, as you mentioned just now. How can you trust that man who has betrayed you so many times? Uh, I think that's the wrong question to ask. Uh, in the past, he was in a position of power. Now, he's in a position where he needs you to, 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 to prop up the situation. And that is the perfect opportunity that the question we should be asking is how can we take advantage of the situation to deliver even more reforms selain daripada apa yang sudah dibentangkan, diberikan, ditawarkan oleh Perdana Menteri, what else can we ask from him in order to uh, uh, move forward to keep a stable government for now for at least 7 to 10 months until the next general elections. Okay, so I, I will speak to you as a, as a layman. What I'm hearing you say is, yeah, uh, the issue of trust, how can you trust someone? Tapi you uh, identified a moment when, uh, in your words, you say the current government was weak. And therefore, with their perceived weakness in your eyes, uh, this would be an opportune moment to strengthen or you, you will have the stronger negotiation tools in hand. Would that be correct? That's correct. So I, I did receive also a lot of criticism. You know, these people are not sincere. They are giving you this offer only because they are weak and desperate. Uh, but I look at it the reverse way. It is precisely because they are weak and desperate. You want to be negotiating with them because you get a better deal out of it. Okay. <laughs> if they are strong and powerful, they will never offer you a good deal. If they offer at all. That. No, so you're, you're exactly right. So uh, when the, let's say the housing market is down, a house that is worth 3 million will go on the market worth uh, 1.8, let's say. That's when you move in with a 1.2 offer. Not yeah. because, because if you moved in with a 1.2 offer when the market is good and the house is 3 million, the guy will just laugh you off. But if he says 1.5 and you come in with 1.2, you still have the idea that, you know what, this, game, this guy may even go even lower and accept my, accept my offer. Would that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And just to address the trust issue in case uh, people think I'm running away from the trust issue. Okay, please do. They, they, people, you, you don't trust politicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> so, so, well, it's, it's, it's never about a trust issue. No, Muidin doesn't trust me. I don't trust Muidin, uh, and I don't even know if politicians within Pakatan Harapan trust each other. But we work with each other based on certain mutual interests and agreement. So that's 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 like that's like two businessmen who don't trust each other, but can can still do a transaction because you have a legal document. In a legal document, there are fail safes. If you default, you pay compensation. If you don't do this. Then the whole thing falters. Same thing for this. Yeah, I don't trust Muhyiddin. But if you don't do this, I won't support your budget. So that those are the negotiations that we need to do around that table in order to achieve an outcome. And if he disagrees, then we pull out. Lah. No loss. Right? That's why in my post, I didn't say we must straight away agree. I said we must at least go to the negotiating table, bincang lah dulu, Tengok sama ada boleh jalan tak boleh jalan. Lepas tu buat keputusan. That's that's what that was. That was what my post was about. I think that's what a majority of people missed in your post. You were not saying yes, say sokong, I accept. You were saying okay, the door has been open. Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's sit down and negotiate. Which is actually uh, kind of the platform that I'm trying to set up here. Is like. Every time I have a guest, which some people don't like, last week I had a RPK. Apa lah, Hare? Apa kau you invite this traitor? <laughs> Today I have Tony Pua. Oh, Hare, why you have this uh, bloody, bloody frog durian fleur? My point is... I'm waiting for durian fleur. Do you are still waiting for durian? Nasi, <laughs> why? I don't, I don't eat durians. I don't like durians, so I don't know what the fascination is with durian, but never mind. But here's my point, yeah. You don't like RPK, you don't like Tony Poi, you don't like Siti Kasim, you don't like Tom Mahathe, whatever. Let's sit down, talk. Let's hear from that person. And then maybe make the decision whether you suka tak suka. So 
I, 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 I read your post and that's, that's what I saw. That was like, you were just saying, hold on, he's made a proposition. Let's talk about it. Let's open the door and don't just block it off. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So moving past that, because in the last, that's how fast Malaysia moves. In the last, I don't know, eight hours, uh, things have changed. So everything we are about to talk about right now, from this point onwards, uh, I would say is unverified. Correct me if I'm wrong. It is unverified. But because of the power of social media and WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and all that, uh, everyone is very well aware that apparently, allegedly, I will use the word allegedly, uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin has at least, as, okay, I'm going to say what I know, you let me know what you know. What I have heard, uh, sorry, I won't use the word I know. What I have heard is that he has written a letter or something of resignation, uh, my understanding is that this letter or this issue will be brought up on Monday, bearing in mind it is now Saturday, where he is stating his uh, intention to resign. Uh, are we on the same page so far? Yes. Okay. So once again, everyone is watching out there. If you're sharing this post, i just like to uh, say that this is allegedly, this is what we hear. Uh, okay. Let's just say that this is fact and this process is underway. Uh, so, so uh, Tony, can you let me? Can you tell me in your own thought process what is going on in your side of the field? Thinking about tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. What is what is happening on from a politician's point of view? Your point of view. What is happening? So I'll be a bit. I'll be a bit more straightforward for the oh, first thank time. Thank you. For, for, for Thank the first you. time, I see Harry beating around the bush, going in circles after circles. Yeah, after... I, I, I don't want, I don't want to get arrested. That's why. <laughs> I, um, I know, like you. <laughs> uh, I think the offer that the prime minister made on Friday was was the last offer okay. to uh, prop up his government because uh, it's quite clear that he has lost the majority. He was hoping that uh, he can secure at least some degree of support or at least uh, non-objection from the opposition camp in order to continue in office. Okay. Um, that has obviously failed. So what we are discussing, what we discussed just now is actually moot because the opposition leaders have rejected the offer. Can, can, can I can I just ask, because the offer was made yesterday, is it so clear within 24 hours that, oh, rejected? Six hours. It, six hours. Uh, we was are very fast in opposition. Opposition was it Officially rejected, was it? Yes. Officially oh, rejected okay. last okay. night at about 10 p.m. So, okay, carry on. Okay. So it was rejected. And uh, once it's rejected... Uh, then it is quite clear uh, the Prime Minister will not call for a confidence vote, which is supposed to be called before the end of August. Okay. So, because what was the point of calling for a vote that you know you're going to lose? <laughs> so, uh, in all likelihood, he will resign. And from what we have heard, uh, that is in progress. And we should see that on Monday. So, the big question is, what next? Exactly. So I, what next? I, I have I have written on my post some potential scenarios. Number one, continued political impasse and chaos because there's no one who has a majority. Not Muidin, not Adon Ibrahim, not Zaya Amidi, not Kuli, not I don't know, Ismail Sabri, not anyone. Not yeah, I, I agree with you. I said exactly no the same thing yesterday. Yeah. So what will happen would be, um, theoretically, what the king should do in the constitution is to appoint the MP whom he thinks is likely to command a majority in parliament. So the like, king, like you use the word likely. Yeah, and that's specifically in the specific in the constitution. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he, so the king theoretically can appoint A. A says he has majority and he will have to prove it in parliament and he might fail or people might all go around to him because he has been appointed. So, so, so we don't know what will happen. If he fails, then the king might appoint B 
why don't you try and then see and so on <laughs> uh, it, it could be a extended impasse we don't know or the king may delay we don't know what will happen we had something like a mini mini crisis like this during the Sheraton move where there was two three weeks when nobody knows what exactly was happening if it is two weeks it might be bearable if it is two months i think we are going to suffer because especially and health especially today where we are one and a half one year eight months into no one a... making decisions on the recovery no one making oh. decisions on the 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 vaccinations and so on that's number one number two someone gets appointed and my guess is someone from amno gets appointed and suddenly he received enough support to become the majority government and that 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 to me is a likely scenario because once someone from amno receives support amno will unite everyone will then uh, fall in line their traditional allies will fall in line and with a few more they have more than enough to form a majority my fear with an amno pm is all the former kleptocrats will get away scot free because they will cut the deal you am no i am no so killer okay no what is in the past is in the past as long as you don't catch me i don't catch you so okay i'm worried people like najib people like zahid will get away scot free that's my concern so that's not a scenario i want to see but that is a possible scenario the third scenario is after weeks of impasse cannot find a solution no choice buba parliament election in the middle of pandemic okay uh so all your three uh choices which you have put on the table which are in my uh, reckoning very logical and and valid choices uh, in your possible, point of view possible. possible possible choices in your point of view okay if, if i was to put you in 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 the in the in the boiling pot which would be the best of the the three uh, can i quit my mp position first <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you're very smart. Very smart. <laughs> okay. I, I mean that that was a reason why I thought it is worth to consider the offer put on the table by Muhyiddin. Um, to be honest, now that's water under the bridge. That's no longer in consideration. Now, what we have to do in Pakatan Harapan is to out of these three unlike two three possible scenarios try and squeeze a fourth scenario that is neither of these three i was i was just going to ask you that <laughs> i i i have no idea what it might be it might be to form some i don't know everyone talk about new coalition but if there was a new coalition that could have been formed it would have been formed already right uh so 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 we we have to see what happens and we have to rely on the wisdom of our leaders to try and find a fourth alternative that is neither of the three that i mentioned just now okay i, I i'm going to kind of i'm going to try and uh, not say jump topic i'm going to try and give a bigger picture a lot of people uh, judging by facebook comments and youtube comments think that or oh, just change the prime minister everything will be better now i think you know more than most and probably more than me but i still know that it's not that easy you don't just change one person and the pandemic goes away or everything all your problems goes away the economy comes back because of the current system in play where it is all tied together it is all linked together where you have to uh, as a politician move the chessboard even with some pieces that you don't want to play with but you are required to play with such that you can move your own piece that you do want to play with uh, am i making sense so far very complicated it is very complicated most people think just uh, to cut to cut the prime minister and all our problems will be solved um that's never going to happen uh, I, I, I wish I'm, it does 
I, I wish the answer was that simple. I, I really do. We, I know what you mean. I, 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 tr I, don't, I don't spend too much time trying to explain this to people, but peop I see the people uh, slamming what you were suggesting yesterday. Just how can you work with these people and just, just move, remove them? Remove them and replace with who? In, everyone's good at removing the, the, the so-called problem, but how do you put, you know, fix the problem? That's what I'm interested in because, frankly speaking, Tony, uh, uh, I'm just a normal layperson and I, through my NGO, the whole branch, I've seen in the last year and a half desperation and anger in people and, you know, losing jobs and all. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you are a politician. It is your job to be political. But do you do you feel do you see the the unemployment the the cannot get the baby's milk cannot pay the house rent cannot pay the motorbike rent cannot pay the insurance am I gonna my landlord is is after me my family has rejected me you're up there within the policy do do they feel this do they talk about this because from our point of view not many seem to I think there's no question that uh, they feel it uh, and they know it and actually actually i think both sides know it uh, they are not so blind not to be able to tell that people are suffering on the ground it's a question of what do you do about it or do you know what to do about it <laughs> two different questions um so so some will try and find solutions but perhaps their solutions don't work. Not very competent. Lah. Some will tap into the emotions and rather voilà, the people just change that prime minister, bring him down, and we'll have a better tomorrow. It's a very strong argument there, uh, as what you mentioned just now. Um, and and for me, for me personally, I try to take perhaps a slightly more rational stance. You you said it yourself just now. Um, if you change the head, the rest of the team remains the same, same clowns, the result will be the same. Yeah. So if you change Muidin with another I'm no clown, uh, am I allowed to say that in your show? Uh, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you change Muidin with Another I'm no clown. He will have the same team in place playing musical chess. It will be the same result. Which is why I was not very excited with just a change of prime minister with the same people there. No, I can't change them all now because it's not a general election. So what I was excited by was Muidin offered all these reforms that no other government after this, will immediately offer. And he promised an election in 10 months, so I'm sure we can sit tight for 10 months while we ride over the pandemic and then fight the elections uh, in, in 10 months. Bring them down. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack two steps. Sure. So, Mohidin makes his speech. Did you uh, and your, your fellow members of the party, did you have some kind of Zoom meeting where you discussed it and then rejected six hours later, or did it just come from from the top without any consultation? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. I think there was a degree of consultation uh, within the uh, within my own party, and subsequent to that, within the three Pakatan Harapan parties. Uh, okay. So 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 decision. The final decision was made at the Pakatan Harapan uh, parties. Yeah, because I uh, the reason I ask is because I actually uh, I see your point of view. You you saw an opportunity uh, opportune moment where for the first time a current ruling government had put this on the table, uh, and in your point of view was a weak weakened government, and had put it on the table. Therefore, you saw an opportunity to not just change the head, but change potentially the system, or what that's right. perceived to be the system. Okay, that's right. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. Now I'm going to put you in a little bit of a spot here. Malaysia is Malaysia. You are always on the spot. I know you. I know. We are... Yeah. This is Malaysia. 
it's only Saturday, it's only 10.30 p.m. <laughs> there are more, th there's 26 hours before Monday. <laughs> A lot can happen. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot of people not sleeping in the next 24 hours, uh, um, doing some uh, trading, perhaps, doing some bartering, perhaps, doing some uh, moving of pieces, perhaps. And Monday, we may be back to step one. I, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, is this potentially what could happen? Are we, are we just excited? Uh, over I, 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 I would, I would. Uh, I would not say step one. I would say that I think this evening, late into the morning, tomorrow, Monday, the key operators of all political parties will be busy talking. Ah. Talking to try and form a new coalition, a new majority. Uh, with the open secret that Muidin will step down. So I don't think the fact that Muhyiddin will step down will change. But okay. everyone will be awake trying to cut a deal to try and find their preferred majority. I don't like you. I like you. I can work with you. So can we work with you and leave him out? You know? Or must we take him? That sort of stuff. Fun are, you, I, are, you, are you involved in any of these conversations? I just, I just want to know. I'm talking to uh, you. <laughs> Yo, why, why are you talking to me? Like, go, go, go and talk to all those people who are talking all the talking, talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so, okay. Let, you know, um, I, I had this show, What's Going On Malaysia, because basically it's a question I'm always asking. And, you know, I just want to, I want to, I want to find some kind of answer to potentially what, what, what can we do to, to fix all this and to just get ourselves in a, a better state. I'm not saying, well, acknowledge we're in a bad state. I, I'm not pointing any fingers, but my interest is in how, why, how can we work together to make this better, to, to, to just, you know, get everything back on track. That's just my main concern. So uh, given that and given what can happen over the next 26 hours, um, what do you okay? Let's let's look at the best case scenario. What do you hope best case scenario could happen Monday onwards, or should happen? I I don't have one at the moment. Uh, ah, my wish. Okay. <laughs> I don't have one at the moment. My wish really is for me to be proven wrong. No, I. What I do you mean? What do you mean by that? I have listed those three scenarios if okay. Muhyiddin resigns tomorrow, the one where the political impasse continues for a fairly long time, the one where AMNO becomes PM and become big and great again, and the third one being general elections. I I am hoping that all the perfect persons who cursed me out there are proven right, and I'm wrong. That actually there was a fourth, even better solution that will arise out of this crisis, and 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 hence uh, improving the the lives of Malaysians in the months going forward. Uh, I don't know what that that fourth option might be. I hope it arises. Uh, I hope we are choosing the least of the bad options in front of us uh, to get through this period uh, before we can the the rocket is finally given the chance to choose a new government. That's that's all I can hope for at the moment. Uh, on that question, when do you see, in, in your personal point of view, when you say the right get to choose a new government, when, when, do you have an estimated month? If, if the political impasse continues, the king might have no choice but to call for elections in November. So there were talks of a potential election in November because by then, 80% of the population would have been fully vaccinated. That, that was the talk. You know? uh, it's still not safe. No. no. So, so we don't really want November, but we may have no choice but have an election in November. My preference is for the election to be held after the middle of next year. 
better still 2023 but i'll take middle of next year as a as a as a safer date to hold an election uh, so that a new majority can be formed uh, with the full support of the rakyat that's that's all we can hope for okay uh, I, I, I have to say that at this moment, I agree with you. It does not look like uh, anything significant is going to get better this year in terms of the pandemic and, and the numbers. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, let, let's talk about this for a while because I always like to find this point of view. Uh, although you are a member of the opposition, what has is there anything or what has been done right so far that you think to yourself, yes, I can work with this. I can continue to support this. I can continue to, to get behind this, even though it comes from uh, the other side. Uh, for, for me, at this point in time, um, whatever policies that helps the people recover from the pandemic or help ease the pain that the people are feeling from the pandemic, is something that we must support. So on, on our side, actually on, on, on DAB side, we have done a fair few constructive stuff. You know, when, when the finance minister, for example, uh, Tengku Zafro, uh, invited us for dialogue on how to, how to craft the national recovery plan, we went. We, we wanted to go and we prepared a plan for him. We prepared our proposals for him. Uh, and we were quite happy that some of these proposals were actually included in the National Recovery Plan. Now, whether it will be implemented well or not, that's another issue. At least the proposals were put in place. So, so we want to contribute even though they are not a government that we like because it is in the interest of the people. You know, before the parliament sitting, last parliament sitting, which was a bit of a mess, we actually also launched the DAP position paper on living with COVID-19 in which we put out a lot of measures on how the nation can move forward in an environment with COVID living with us uh, while saving jobs at the same time managing the pandemic. It was a 20-30 page document. Uh, I think many people liked it. Uh, the Edge even gave the, 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 the paper full coverage. You know, it's quite rare for the Edge to give coverage for political related stuff, but they, they liked it and they gave full coverage for the document. We presented it to the Deputy Prime Minister uh, and we really hoped that the government will pay serious attention to the proposals that we put in there. So, so, so there are some things that we like. There are some things that they have incorporated from our proposals. Not enough, we think, but we keep pushing, we try. Uh, and in certain areas such as in vaccination, we have also done a lot to support the campaign. No, it may be carried out by the government on the other side. We don't like them very much, but we need the people vaccinated and we have been supporting the campaign. You know, one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Ong, was sitting in the CITF, which is the, 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 the agency managing the vaccination to help solve the crisis in the Klang Valley. You know, there was a huge surge in cases in Klang Valley. So Dr. Ong sat in there to figure out how we can set up more PVVs, figure out how more people will get vaccinated and so on. So, so those are the things that we are happy to contribute from a bipartisan perspective, uh, not from a political perspective, because it actually helps the people. Why, why is there not uh, more awareness of this? You know, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, what I've not seen is uh, members of opposing parties both standing together beside each other at a podium. Uh, the way we often see speeches given now and guys saying, you know what, this is a program and we are both for it. Has that uh, opportunity ever come up or is it not part of the way things are done? It does now and then, but uh, it's generally, generally not deemed as the coolest thing to do. I, yeah. It's not cool to be whacking the government and it's easier. It's not so cool to be sitting in a, gov uh, a committee that the government runs trying to fix difficult problems because you may get dragged down by it, perhaps. Uh, am I being too honest here? Maybe I yeah, should talk less. No, I, I, I know exactly. <laughs> Please keep going. <laughs> uh, but, but, but basically, and, and in part also, we, we did, for, for us, when we did the papers, we did 
we did publicize it. But us issuing press release, publicizing it, the handover of the, the, the document to the Deputy Prime Minister, if the press don't publish it, there's not much we can do about it. You know, not everyone read the, read the age, for example. You know, most people read yeah. something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, uh, if you look at uh, social media comments and all, everyone is saying, oh, why can't we put politics aside and just work together? But you are actually talking about uh, moments or instances that you have worked together. Tapi, this may seem and, far and, 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 and the best few. example of trying to put politics aside and work together is the offer that the Prime Minister put on the table for us. Yes. But emotions take over. People are angry. People are very angry. I can just completely understand the anger involved, but that's when I put up the post hoping to put politics aside. See, kid? Hey, there's this opportunity to do some good for the country. Uh, not easy, huh? You not should be see what you do. <laughs> no, no, I, I just, I just, I meant laugh. You live longer. <laughs> that's that's my motto, uh, That's what the country and, needs, man. <laughs> and other politicians have been uh, taking our jobs, uh, <laughs> making people laugh. Ah, <laughs> uh, but okay, you know what? Uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I'm 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 glad to hear that there have been instances where uh, both sides of the political divide have started to work together because I think it's going to become my my uh, mission now to to show that that you can work together and people have been working together but you just don't know about it because exactly like you said the moment uh, uh, Tan Sri Mohidin gave a speech you saw an opportunity that was a moment to work together in British commerce but it was shot down uh, on many parts uh, by by your, your own supporters uh, as seen as insincere and all but uh, who, who's to gauge what is sincere or not sincere because you know uh, more than others that sometimes you need to work together with people you may not like but if you have a common vision um would that be correct to say would that be uh a... i wouldn't say common vision because i don't think they believe in the proposals okay but common interest common interest aligned interest that if the interest fits the needs and the the, 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 the interest of the rakyat, then I think we should pursue that line. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, we had a lot of uh, people send in videos uh, asking you a question. I'd like to play uh, one or two of them. Now, bearing in mind, these videos came before the news that... Uh, uh, you know, Tanji Muhyiddin may have attended in his resignation letter, but keeping that in mind, uh, I'd just like to give an, an opportunity to, to some of the viewers to uh, ask you this question and, and let's see how you answer. So this one, I believe, uh, I, I, I can't remember his name, I think it's Jagdeep, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So what, I have two yes. questions for Tony Poa. Firstly, uh, would be, in the great words of Azmin Ali, wouldn't it be stupid for the opposition to work with the PM to secure his position in parliament as PM um, when all this time he has not delivered what he has promised and even his cabinet is bloated, underperforming. So that is against all of the principles that the opposition is working for. And yeah, and the second question would be, if you guys even take out the promise, what compels the PM to follow up with his promises it just doesn't there doesn't seem to be any way you guys didn't compel him to even deliver the 150,000 laptops you guys couldn't compel him to you know implement only 18 until this last moment you know it feels like he's he's trying to dish out everything he can so until now the the opposition has been fragmented so what what makes you think that if you guys work with pm with the pm that you'd get whatever he's promised by the 22nd of i mean by the by the 2022 yeah 2022 july what what makes you guys think that it will work um i i think i answered the second part of the yeah. question again already but never mind the first part of the question is yeah i i'll be the first to agree with you the the the, the government has screwed up the last 18 months so they have 
So we look forward. They have, they have screwed up, you know. And I, I, I admitted myself. I want them to resign. But if they were to resign, I want to know someone better is taking over, <laughs> not someone else that will screw it up worse. Yeah. So, so that's important. So when I look and analyze the situation, when if he resigns, I don't see a better option. And now he's offering you going forward, going forward, not something he did in the past, but going forward, an opportunity for Malaysia to reform. I think we should consider. Okay? Now, consider means go and talk lah, bincang dulu. Now, then your next question is when bincang dulu comes, is whether we can trust him to deliver. That's why bincang is important. Hey, you sure you deliver? Last time you bluff us, you know. You also never deliver? Uh, see what deposit you put, lah. as you say, lah, put down deposit dulu. Lah. You know, you want to buy a house, hey, I don't believe you pay up. You pay earnest deposit first, non-refundable, okay? So that I know you're committed to these terms. Uh, so the sincerity issue, the trust issue no longer matters because deposit has been paid, okay? And you know in the terms, kalau dia tak deliver, you don't deliver because from now for the next, well, eight months, 10 months, any bill that comes, perlukan sokongan daripada pembangkang, from the opposition. So we, you don't deliver, we don't support government collapse. And he wouldn't want that. So we, we, we have something on him. If we have nothing on him, of course, he promised anything, we cannot assure that he deliver. But now we have something. We are grabbing hold of something, you know? So it has to be a two-way thing. Okay, he deliver what we want. We give him the necessary support for the next eight to ten months before the general elections is called. Is okay. Book, eh? uh, <laughs> I know it's it, it it sometimes fries my brain to just you know imagine what, what you guys have to uh, are dealing with on that level. Let me let me look forward. Let me look. Uh, uh, to answer the question, what's going on in Malaysia? How? Let me let me ask you this question: What? Uh, put, putting, if we can, politics aside, which I know is impossible. What can be done better? And and specifically, I'm talking about uh, starting with the pandemic, which then affects livelihood, which then affects economy, which then affects investments, which then affects uh, everything down the line. Uh, drop, 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 drop. Um, you know, to, to the people on the street who are working in restaurants and clothes shops uh, and having businesses, nothing's going to happen immediately. But what can be done better that we can at least see? And I'm not talking about seeing numbers going down. I'm seeing seeing people believe there is a reason to live, a reason to, to keep on fighting, which I know a lot of people are losing that hope. What can be done better? Keeping politics aside, what do we need to do? Uh. You've asked a very, very heavy uh, question. Um, I think that, that there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, there needs to be investment in the right places. You know, we know that a lot of the transmission comes from workplaces. You, know? you cannot shut down workplaces forever. You know? So you have to open them. At some point in time, you have to open them. Shutting them is not a solution. But you need to help them pandemic-proof their workplaces. You know, uh, a lot of people argued that uh, why are the factories kept open? You know, uh, why don't you shut them down during EMCO? Actually, most companies and operations are already shut, so there are some operate some factories that are still running. Will it make a difference if you shut them down? Very marginal. Why? Because if the workers don't infect each other at the factory floor, they'll infect each other in the workers' dormitory. So the cases will still happen. So the, the lockdown solution isn't quite there anymore. What we need to do is help factories pandemic-proof their workplaces. And then we need to change our mindset from essential, non-essential. You know, Now the mindset is essential boleh jalan, non-essential, kena tutup. 
but there are some non-essential that are very low risk. Why do you need to to top them? Even if they are non-essential, you're actually stopping people from earning a livelihood. If they are very low risk, if they comply with SOP, biar dia orang buka, let them open. You know? So we should go from a risk measurement instead of an essential, non-essential type measurement. Now, I don't want to bore everyone with all these policies, but they are all actually documented in fairly detail in our policy paper. For those who want to know, can go to our website. Let me advertise a bit, dapmalaysia.org. Uh, find it under the living with COVID uh, policy. You, you find our paper there. But there are a lot of measures out there that we can improve. And uh, we have engaged with the other side to try and put in some of these measures. Okay, let me ask you. Uh, these measures sound, I would agree with them. They sound logical. There, are, To me, I, I agree with you 100%. And I've said this many, many months ago. There is no such thing as non-essential because even if you go oh the making of uh wooden dolls is no non-essential maybe the wooden doll may be non-essential but there is a worker who is paid a salary who then feeds his family who then sends his little girl to school and that is essential the salary is essential not the maybe maybe not the wooden doll but the job is essential so i i've often struggled with the idea of what is essential everything is essential even prostitution is essential because there is an economic... In, do you know what I mean? If, as long as no, someone's no. making money and feeding their child, it becomes essential. I'm going what to the far end. <laughs> I'm going to the far end, far end of things. But that's... So I agree with you. Okay. What is stopping this kind of sensible, or what I would seem sensible proposal that everybody doesn't get on board and goes, you know what? Yeah. Everything is essential or... Uh, let us open that non-essential place because it's low risk because these seems like fairly logical decisions. How come something like that, in your opinion, doesn't go through? Um, my simple answer, and I think the issue is a lot more complex than that, but my okay. simple answer will be leadership and competence. So there is a lack of leadership and competence in the current government and that one we have no question but we are happy to work with them to improve things you, know, you can bantai 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 all you like it's not going to improve things you know, like it or not they sit there you have to work with them to try and improve things uh and 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 that because of also of a weak government when there's a conflict no one dares to make a decision let me give a simple example. It's an extreme example, but it's a very simple example. Okay. Golf is deemed as the safest spot around because you can play pretty much at social distance, open air, over acres of space. But it is always shut down. You know? uh, yeah. Why? Because no one has the courage to change it. Because you scared, kena marah, you scared conflict. So go with the easiest solution, just shut down. So that 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 lack of leadership, that instability mindset, that fear of doing something wrong, prevents uh, the right solutions from being delivered many a times. You know? the example I gave gave is a is an extreme example, but it applies to many things. Whether it is your boba tea shop. You know, it's non-essential. I don't have to drink bubble tea. But it is an economy that's running, as you said, with workers running it. But it is extremely low risk. Why do you need to shut it down? You know, so things things like that uh, 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 requires a degree of leadership and political courage to make that decision. You know, the health officers will always come and say lockdown everything. Because that's the simplest solution they can give. Because their KPI is how many people get infected. The health officer's KPI is not how many people lose their job. The meeting officers will always say, open everything. Because their KPI is not how many people get infected. Their KPI is how will my economy, economy perform 
going forward. So it requires political courage and leadership to say, hey, this is where you draw the line. No, uh, nobody gets what you call it, uh, uh, total control. And this is the approach I want to take going forward. Those, those, are the, those, are the, those are the things that are needed in the time of crisis. Uh, but when you leave people debating here and there, that's when you get flip-flop. Lah. One day lockdown, one day buka, one day lockdown, one day buka because of the tensions between your various ministry and there's no leadership in the government. Okay, you said it was going to be a simple answer, but I think, <laughs> no, I, I, it, totally, it totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. No, because every day we receive the numbers, a uh, number of new cases, number of case symbol, number of uh, orang mati, uh, meninggal dunia, blah, blah, blah. We don't see number of people who lost their job, number of people who cannot pay their rent, number of people who, who uh, got uh, uh, divorced, number of people who, who got thrown out of the house, number of people who committed suicide. You know, you if they idea. if there was a press conference every day where someone announced those five or six facts, after a while, I think we all start thinking that's almost as much of a problem as this is, if you know what I mean. Because those facts are not thrown at us every single day in a nice PDF chart. I, I, I have some nice colors there, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay, so. We're going to have to wait over the weekend uh, and I'm sure you're going to be very busy on your WhatsApp and, uh, you know, talking to your, your colleagues and friends about what's going on. Uh, but before before we call this to an end, uh, Tony, I just want to say that how, how long more can you do this? Like, uh, you, you've been in the game. <laughs> you know, I like, see that question. I haven't talked to my bosses yet. <laughs> Are you going to be around till you're 96 or? No, that, that, that I can tell you no. Um, I, 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 I admire my um, senior, the legend Lim Kit Siang. The fact that he's um, 80 this year and he has spent his entire career fighting politics is amazing. I honestly it's crazy, right? Out. I honestly don't know how he does it. And he has suffered, to, I mean, to be honest, he has suffered worse crises and worse defeats than we have ever faced in, in, in my 14 years in politics. You know, he lost his seat himself. The party was, was nearly bankrupt. The, the left with 10 MPs. You know, that, that sort of loss and, 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 and setback are not the typical loss that you can easily overcome and come back again stronger. It, 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 is, it is almost superhuman. And, uh, but as much as I admire him for it, I, I draw inspiration from him. Uh, I am not Kit Siang. I don't have that, uh, what do you call it, uh, politics still, I'm 80 in me. I want to do my part. Uh, because I, 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 I feel that I have to contribute. Uh, but it may not be the same way of contribution uh, all the way till I'm 80. At some point in time, uh, I will need to take a back seat. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I am very, uh, some would say, overly aggressive in trying to attract new blood. My hope is that my biggest achievement in politics is not so much that I expose one NDB, bring down Najib, or maybe some magic formula to save the current crisis. My hope is that my biggest achievement will be to attract sufficient talented young Malaysians to be interested and to join politics because they will be the core that will take us forward in the years to come. And uh, I love talking to young people. Uh, and I've always told them this, this line. You think your cabinet, how many of you think some of them are idiots? Many. You know why they are idiots and they are cabinet members? Ministers, tau. Why? Because if all clever people like you don't join politics, only stupid people become MPs and they become ministers. <laughs> And then you blame them for being stupid. 
Okay. So unique, <laughs> you need clever people to join. Then only you can get clever ministers. If it is is that rubbish in, rubbish out theory. So 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 I hope uh, to inspire or I hope to to encourage uh, more young clever Malaysians to at some point in their career play a part in building politics, a better politics, a more competent politics uh, to take Malaysia forward. I think that's 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 my personal objective. And a, a very fine objective, I would I would say as well. Uh, it is is the same argument I kind of have with uh, some people I know who go overseas and then complain about Malaysia. Oh, this is the reason uh, you know, Malaysia. Left. And uh, sometimes I do get into an argument because I know these people. I say, "Well, you left. You left. So how how is going away and complaining?" going to make it better if what you're leaving back here are the people you know the people who are entrusted with 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 the, with the rules and the laws and all so if you really want to change you need number one you need to stay and make that change be that change so i'm 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 with you on that on on that side of things uh also i want to ask um do you come across many smart young people who are uh, committed to, to join this line? Um, I, I, I have seen more, uh, although there are not many. I've seen more and although there are not many. Uh, what I do hope is what I do today, talking on Harif Iskandar show, hopefully some teenager out there is watching this, someone I don't know, but in 10 years time, he will be part of the political family who can make a difference for Malaysia. I think that those are the things we want to do. We want to plant seeds and hope that some of them will grow into big trees for Malaysia. On that note, let me ask you something because uh, so you've been in this for 14 years, right? Mm. When you started, was that was was social media a thing back then, 14 years ago, 2000? 14 years ago in 2007, internet was just sort of getting popular and the most popular medium then was blogs. You remember blogs? Yes, blogs, of course. <laughs> that's that's where you got the alternative news. That's right, uh, yeah. blogs. Uh, and after blogs in 2013, then you started getting a little bit of Facebook, not really influential then, uh, but Facebook and Twitter then became very big for 2018. Okay, so let's talk about currently. So here you are, uh, 2021, you post up a Facebook post, and then immediately you are bombarded with thousands of messages. And I don't know how many percent of that are almost hateful. Like, okay, so you, you're slightly older, you're slightly more experienced. Does it, I, I don't know whether it affects you or not, but can you, I can't imagine the amount of, of uh, you know, like to just take today as an example. I was getting hit on your behalf. I don't know why I was getting hit. <laughs> I was like, okay, tapu, uh, you don't like Tony, fine. Uh, can you tell him? Don't tell me. <laughs> like, you know. So I was getting hit just for inviting you on my show. So how do you navigate that? How do you? Uh, yes, I know it is feedback. It is sometimes it's anonymous, but it's got to be a whole different mindset where yeah, you, you're dealing with this. And okay, you're slightly you, older. You, maybe you have a different game. But the, the the layman's language to that is that you have to have very thick skin. Thick skin. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But but it's more a mental thing than the skin thing. Um, you have to be able to be confident of your own position. You know why you think what you think. And you know why people don't think why, what you think. So once you understand where they are coming from, even if they are overwhelming, you live with it. It's okay. It's the same thing when I was fighting Najib when I had like two legal cases against the prime minister or the prime minister was suing me for or defamation on two cases, and uh, I was under a lot of pressure and stuff. It's the same thing. You you just have to compartmentalize it, uh, believe in what you're doing, and then everything else is secondary. So you can every night go back to to, to go back house, uh, uh, hug the wife, lie down in bed, uh, close your eyes, and knock off. No, you don't have to worry about it. So so it's 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 a bit of a mindset thing. If you want me to expand on that. 
uh, I was I, I have I, I used to be in business okay. before I joined politics. Uh, so I ran my own startup uh, and then I sold it about 10, 10, 10 years later uh, and then I joined politics. Uh, my business friends all asked me, how can you join politics? It must be very stressful, you know? I said, it's actually more stressful doing business than in politics. Of course, they don't believe really? me because they have a different mindset. Uh, in, in my view, in business, you have to make sure you have enough income every month to pay salaries. You have to keep selling. You have to keep your shareholders happy. You have to keep increasing your profits so that your share price can continue to go up. Those, to me, are stressful. For others, maybe it's a natural thing. In politics, uh, I do my best. The outcome is not within my control. So I don't have to worry about whether it happens or not tomorrow. I just need to be... Uh, 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 at peace with myself that I know I've done my best and that's all I need to do. I need to wake up knowing that everything I do today is extra for the country, whatever the outcome that matters. So I don't have outcome to deliver. Of course, I want to win elections, but I don't have to put down the whole weight of elections there, stress, have to beat Najib, have to win the next election. What am I going to do? I cannot sleep tonight. None of that. I just need to know I wake up every day, do the best I can to cope. And then we hope for the best to happen after that. So it's a mindset thing. I I I, I like I like the idea of focusing on the mindset. Uh, I'm sure in your political career, and this probably is uh, one of the unavoidable things about politics, along the way, uh, there will be instances where you will need to or uh, are required to perhaps sacrifice, uh, let's say, to put in simple terms, to save five people, one needs to die. Uh, you know, uh, if, if this was a war, uh, instead of saying, you know, along the way, you're going to have to sacrifice something for the greater good. Uh, I, I would often, I would think if I was forced to do that, how I would struggle with it. So is, is this also mindset? Because I'm sure along the way you need, I'm not saying, I'm using the example of you know, a war where one needs to die, but along the way, something needs to be sacrificed where given the choice, I, I would not like want to sacrifice that, but for the greater good, I need to drop this to have that happen. Uh, has I, this ever happened? I would use a different analogy. <laughs> Please do. I'm not a politician, so I, I was I just thinking war think games. About sacrificing a life to save five because it, 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 it's a conflict. I like to think of it as a chess game. Okay. Yes. There are times when you need to use gambits. You need to sacrifice your pawn so that you can capture the queen yeah. of the opponent. And that is exactly what I was thinking about going back to your topic for the day uh, about the offer that was made by the Prime Minister. We need to sacrifice the pawn today so that we can capture the queen tomorrow. Uh, we should not be so, so what do you call it, so focused on what is that one step ahead, the pawn right in front of you, you stupid, uh, it's there for you to capture and you don't capture. You must be an idiot. <laughs> Was I too rough there? Um, no, and, you're exactly and, on the point, on point. And, 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 and I try to look at it, hey, let's sacrifice that pawn, no? Take a back seat and hope to achieve a better outcome for Malaysia uh, overall. You know, uh, you've you've put it, you have put it absolutely clear, especially for someone like myself who plays chess, because at the end of the day, this is a chess game. You know, everyone is like, save the pawn, save the pawn. No, sometimes the pawns are there to take the fall, uh, to set up the the rook, and then the rook moves across and you think, oh, you're going to lose your rook. No, because the castle is standing by and the whole game is to bring down the queen. Uh, and the yeah. king. And the king. Uh, sorry, to checkmate the king, to, to, to disable the queen and to checkmate the king. Yeah. But you're right. Uh, if only um, more people could understand that instead of calling you an idiot today for, for, uh, for posting whatever you posted. Uh, Tony, uh, I... Oh, 
before before we, we call this night, I know you've had a very, very long day. Uh, what's going on in Malaysia? <laughs> Once again, I, I, I will end the show with, like, you know, what's next? Uh, I know you said you really don't have the answer of the fourth option. You really would like a fourth option to come in. Um, given that a fourth option may pop up within the next 28 hours or 36 hours, where where do you see, where do you hope Malaysia to be in five years' time? What you know, what where where can we go? Why, can we climb out of all of this? Is there still hope? Let, let me let me let me take the perspective and stretch it a bit longer. Okay. Um, we are in a crisis, and in every crisis, people are always in despair because we see what's in front of us. Um, and but I would sometimes even for myself to make me make myself feel better and to keep myself going, always take a couple of steps back and look at things from a longer term perspective. What the country has achieved politically over the past 30 years is enormous. You know, we are in pain now, you know, but if you look at it over 30 years huge improvements to our system has been put in place because of the struggles and efforts of many like Kit Siang over the past 30 years. To me, it's like a stock market. You know, you go up, come down, oh, very painful. Ah. You go up again, come down, oh, very painful. Ah. Go up, come down. But even at that down, which we're having now, if you look back 30 years ago, it is much higher than where the up was 30 years ago. So we have improved. We have taken three steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, one step back, but we are taking steps forward. And I believe that a lot of these steps are irreversible. The fact that BN is no longer the dominant one-party system in Malaysia is irreversible. We don't want that to come back. Now, whether we can get over the setback in one year or get over the setback in three years, that's up for debate. But I believe that the long term, in the long term, we are in the right trajectory. Uh, the chart is going up. And if you look at the chart even further back, you would hardly see the little kings or setbacks uh, in history. And that's, that's what's important for Malaysia. That's how we need to not miss the woods for the trees or miss the trees for the woods. I always get that mixed up. Uh, and 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 see the bigger picture, and keep the faith. You know, stay in the fight, keep the faith, because that's how we can get better. Thank you very much, Tony, uh, especially for leaving us with that final uh, vision of yours. Excuse my wife sneezing at the side there, but you are. But but yeah, I I, I get what you're saying. Two, three steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back. Uh, I would like to add on to that. At this very moment, 2021, we are at a very low of all lows, potentially one of the lowest uh, our nation has ever seen in, in its short history. But I uh, am with you in the fact that I believe that most, if not all people, really want us to move forward and uh, together, if we can get past these kinks, get past these arguments, get past the focus on the pawn and uh, look at the whole big chessboard, I think together we can get to a point where we now step forward, in, step forward again as opposed to where we are right now. So with that, Tony, I want to say thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to add just before you nope. go? Thank you. thank you so much already. Thank you so much for, for, for agreeing to be with us. I know you had another Facebook Live session just before this, so I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate uh, everything that you have shared with us today. And I think you have proven that at the end of the day, this is all about jom kita duduk kat meja, kita bercakap, kita bincang dulu. And then maybe we may find out something we didn't know before and have a chip on the table to negotiate the next step. So thank you again, Tony. Uh, uh, I appreciate your time and I really hope to, after all of this is over, that we do catch up one day soon for a Teta race. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night. All right, guys, so that was uh, Tony Poir. I don't know about you, but uh, 
I am um, feeling a little bit lifted. I am feeling a little bit uh, up after that conversation with Tony. Uh, and I hope some of you who uh, mungkin at the beginning rasa or felt that he, you know, were one of those people who were shouting, hey, you idiot. I hope that uh, the conversation with him has brought maybe a, hopefully a different light, a different opinion. If it hasn't, it's fine. But uh, in my opinion, in my experience, it certainly does. Guys, um, this program is called What's Going on Malaysia for a Reason. What's going on in Malaysia is a question. It is a question that I ask myself. Uh, it is a question that I ask my friends. And basically, I am on the hunt and the search for an answer. What's going on in Malaysia? And that is why I have this program. That is why I have this weekly or bi-weekly conversations. Because with every guest that I have, I don't need to like them. I don't need to know them. I don't need to agree with them. Uh, many times I, I, I'm all three and many times I, I do know them and I agree with them. But it is all with one intention in mind. The more questions you ask, the more conversations you have, the more dudo ka media dan berbincang, the more likely I am to get the answer to my question, what's going on in Malaysia? And with this question and with this episode tonight with Tony Poir, have I found the answer? No, I most certainly have not. But I feel I am one step closer to finally eventually answering the question, what's going on in Malaysia? And I hope you uh, feel compelled to join me in, in more episodes. Go back over the previous episodes I've had. It's both on my YouTube channel and my Facebook channel. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, guys, it will be mean a lot to me if you do that, as well as um, uh, following and liking on Facebook. And if you have any comments, any ideas, any feedback, please Comment. Remember to hashtag what's going on Malaysia. Hashtag what's going on Malaysia. That way it is easier for me to find your comments in your Instagram, in your Twitter, in your Facebook, in your YouTube. Hashtag what's going on Malaysia. Then I can find you and I can find what you're talking about. Thank you for all the DMs. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for the time that you've spent with me. Uh, once again, all the comments. My God, thank you so much. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you again. Oh, tomorrow, uh, I have got a very a special, I've got, straight away, another guest tomorrow. Uh, let me just bring up the poster. Tomorrow, I'm going to be having uh, Dr. or uh, Professor, hold on. Is the picture coming up? Oh, this picture's not coming up. I don't know why it's not coming up. Okay. It's Professor Ajayles. We'll be, got, we'll be talking about Education in Malaysia tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Please join me again. And once again, thank you very much to Tony Pua for joining me uh, and bringing me one step closer to answering my question, what's going on Malaysia after tonight? I'm feeling a little bit more hopeful, and I hope you are too. My name is Harit Iskandar. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Take it easy.